Falcons, welcome to this magnificent Monday. We've got a great lineup for you. Let's get on with the show. Well, let's click. Okay. Uh, first off, uh, we'd like to welcome three guest teachers to campus. We've got Miss Rico Barnes, Mr. Epps, and Miss Smeagol here. Thank you so much for being here. We hope you have a fantastic day on our campus. By the way, it is Monday. It is January 23rd. 2023. Sorry about that. Next up, our lunch menu today on the 23rd here, we've got beef and broccoli with brown rice. We've got a chicken Caesar wrap and we've got a homemade bean and cheese burrito. Pretty eclectic version there. Uh, maybe what we would consider a little Chinese food, a little bit of um, American cuisine, and then we've got uh, some Mexican food. So maybe one of those will tempt you and make you excited. All right, outside seating. Not sure if we're going to do it today or not. It is not going to get too warm out there today. I saw a high of 51 degrees, so we may be staying inside. But if we do determine that you guys can be comfortable outside, we are on the 23rd here. That would mean in that first lunch, Miss Levin and Miss Seymour. The second lunch, Miss Varela and Miss Herb. And the third lunch, Miss Monahan and Miss Sparks. All right, I know it's been a long time. We have not had Coach Lampo here, and we are going to turn it on over to him. So uh, I'm excited to bring him back. Take it away, Coach Lampo. Well, howdy, Millennial Falcons. It is me, Coach Lampo, here for your Monday motivation. I want to talk to you about a really big word today called communication. All right, communication is the key for an organization to work super well for my AFC Richmond and for you Millennial Falcons. And there's two different things I want to talk to you about communication. The first one is how to apologize because I got a big apology. I have not been here the last two weeks and I know we had that winter break there going too. So I apologize. Will you please accept my apology for not being here on Mondays? I certainly hope so. I'm trying to gain some of those Talk tick users back and those Instabook and those Facegram users because I know I want to build up that phone and building up that Coach Lampo brand. All right. So, again, I certainly apologize and I will be better. Secondly, with communication, do you, do you guys like, do you like secrets? Like secrets or quiet, respectful ways to get attention? All right. So, I'm going to teach you three different ones. I know you guys have been working with social contracts. And that is so wonderful for you guys to figure out how to treat one another and how you want to be treated and to hold each other accountable for that. But to hold each other accountable, we we got to all do our part, right? Teachers got to do their part. And if a teacher wants their attention in class, they're going to do it lots of different ways. They got all sorts of teacher tricks, but I'm going to encourage this symbol right here. This symbol is nice because if you're drawing or you're writing or you're typing, you can't do that and do this at the same time. So you got to stop what you're doing to make sure you're listening to that important message. Secondly, we got to check ourselves sometimes. And sometimes you're at a table and that other classmate of yours is maybe not following their directions. So you give them a little symbol like this. Okay. You're just checking yourself. Come on now. We can be better. There's someone giving a message. Maybe it's your classmate. Maybe it's your teacher. Maybe it's maybe it's a uh, a guest teacher. I don't know but this is our check ourselves. And the last one is when we communicate, sometimes we hurt each other's feelings, even when we're good friends, okay? Even when we're good friends. And the best way to do that, we don't just want to not say anything because then someone's not going to know, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But a way to show that, hey, that crossed the line or that really made me upset, we just do this. You know, I know you don't have an AFC Richmond patch right over your right over your heart there, but that just shows some, hey man, that hurt. Can you? Can we work this out? I don't want you hurting me and I'm sure you didn't try to hurt me, okay? So we've got our quiet symbol. We've got our check ourselves symbol and we've got our, man, that hurt symbol. Not to mention, work on those apologies. Teachers, I'm gonna encourage you guys to do some role playing with that, okay? I give an apology, someone accepts the apology or they say, hey, you know what? I accept that apology, please don't do that again. Okay, we don't want someone thinking it's okay to do something wrong. All right, so that's my Monday motivation message for you. I apologize to all my followers out there. Please, please make me your favorite part of Monday. 
Don't abandon me. I will not abandon you. All right. Do you believe that? I believe that. I think I can be better. All right, everyone. On three. One, two, three. Believe. All right, that is a great message from Coach Lampo. We're going to continue with that communication theme. When we think about sore behavior, that last one, respect. Respect means um, making sure that we understand how people are feeling. We want to make them feel better. And a lot of times people communicate how they're feeling uh, in lots of different ways. Sometimes it's through the words they choose. Sometimes it's through the way they look. Uh, sometimes it's through the way they sound. I want everyone here to make your happiest face. Go. I want everyone to make your saddest face. I want everyone to make your angriest face. All right. What you were doing right there is you were communicating. And we communicate what we call non-verbally all the time with our facial expressions, through the way our body looks. Uh, how many of you have a dog? Okay, dogs communicate through barking, but obviously they don't speak our language, but they communicate a lot with their tails or the way that their teeth look. And as humans, we do that a lot too. And I have a quick quiz for you because I want you to understand how important it is to not only use the right words, but to use the right tone as well as make sure that our body language is one where we're really communicating in a positive way. So I have a question for you. It says, what percentage of communication is body language? So think about your body language. Think about uh, what your body looks like when you're talking. Are your arms crossed? Are they, are they up here? So what percentage of communication is body language? Do you think it's A, 15%, B, 35%, C, 45%, or D, 55%? Have that, meth, have that answer in your head here. Uh, if you know sign language, you could be showing that up. You could have A, you could have B, you could have C, you could have D. All right, let's take a look. We're going to go ahead and take away one of these choices. Ooh, if you had 15%, that is not correct. You can adjust and choose one of the next ones. Ooh, now we're down to 45 and 55%. That's a lot of communication that has nothing to do with our words, but the way our body looks. <gasps> It is 55%. More than half of our communication comes from the way our body looks. That includes our, our body itself, the head, the, the, uh, all those angry and sad faces we just made. It's really important when we're talking about our body language and how much that's communicating how we're feeling or what our message is going to be. So that was 55%. What percentage of communication is tone of voice? I want you to think about when people talk. What do they sound like? Do they sound like this? Are they talking like this? That tone of voice is pretty important. How important do you think it is? Do you think it's 38% important, 70, 55, or 100%? My friends who have some deductive reasoning know that that last answer was 55. So there's really only one correct answer here because all these numbers are going to have to add up to 100%. That's right. It's going to be 38%. So tone's really important too. So we've had 55%. 38%. The last question is, what percentage of communication are the words that we use? Now, words are important. I talk to kids about this all the time um, because there can be words that are nice. There can be words that are mean. There can be words that are showing a level of, of frustration, but not getting you into trouble. Um, so words are important, but we just learned that tone and that body language is really important. So we only have a little bit of percentages left. Those of you who can do mental math, we've had 55, we've had 38. So some of these answers just aren't going to make sense. To our younger listeners, that's okay. You'll work on that mental math later. Let's see. Let's, let's get two of those out of there. So it's either going to be 7 or 17%. All right. Answer. Lock it in. It is 7%. So when we communicate, oops. Don't want to go there. When we communicate, the way we look and how we sound are exceptionally important. So Coach Lampo talked about apologizing. If I said, I'm sorry, you think that person's really sorry? No. You're going to pay attention to the way their face looks, to the tone of their voice. Those words, I'm sorry, can sound great or they can sound not so genuine. That's our... Uh, 
little message for you. Communication is really important. And that goes a long way, long way with respect, because when we're looking at doing those apologies or when we're looking at talking to our classmates, we really want to think about the tone. We want to think about our body language. And that's going to go a long way to us having even a more respectful campus. That is all our announcements for today. I'm going to turn on over to Mr. B. You guys have a fantastic day. And as always, soar high, Falcons. Good morning, Falcons. Please stand for the pledge. Take your right hand, place it over your heart. Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And now the Millennial Pledge. Please raise your right hand. I pledge to be a Millennial Falcon. Watch me soar, safe, organized, accountable, respectful, are my main four. Make sure you have a good day and remember to be kind.